Hey Sparkles, what's up? And welcome back to Moonlight Jewel. And if you're new here, make sure to smash that subscribe button to become a sparkle as well. As you can see, today's video is a super special one because my friends Enchantarium, Kextian, The Dolly Geek, Harris Workshop, Mr. Super Customs and me teamed up to bring you some magical girl power. We all created our own magical gods with their special abilities, so make sure to check out my friends' videos as well. As a huge Sailor Moon and magical girlfriend myself, who even cosplayed her once, this was a very heartfelt project for me. I decided to create a magical girl inspired by video games and arcade halls. By the way, my little bean kitty figurine will be available now in my shop from July 30th, 8 p.m. CET. Once they're sold out, they'll be gone forever unless I make a new Kickstarter. So grab yours as long as you can. Link is in the description box below. This is going to be a huge project, so without further ado, let's create Maho Shoujo Arcade Skater Suki. For my magical girl, I will be customizing a rainbow high doll for the very first time. I will use Sunny. I came up with an idea on how I want my doll to look like and asked Yui Kano on Instagram if she could make a nice and clean concept art of my initial sketch. She did an insane job and this will be the template for my magical girl. Let's prepare Sunny. Sadly, your beautiful hair has to go. I'm sorry. <coughs> So I chopped off her hair I like your kaji. and gave her a spa bath in boiling water. Help me! <laughs> oh, sorry. After I removed her head, it was nice and squishy, so I was able to cut a very perfectly shaped professional head plate out of it in order to be able to extract the eyes. This looks so wrong. Oh god! <laughs> oh! Oh my goodness, those are some odd looking eyes. Oh yeah, and the head was still super hot on the inside. Ouch. I then just removed all the remaining hair from the head and cut the insides of the eyes open since they were covered with a vinyl layer. Looks good enough. Time to scrub off that face up, which was a bit difficult because of all the glitter that was added to it, so I'm just making some editing magic happen here. Boom! Fantastic! Now we can finally start working on her. For the doll's hair, I dyed this doll hair in a pink-yellow gradient. I will reroute just the hairline of the doll, because the rest is going to be a wig. You can see I already did one test strand and it looks really good. I just take my rooting tool and hook the hair at the very end of the strand and push it into the head. Okay, now I repeat that about a million more times until I end up with something like this. I taped her scalp back on and now we can make the wig part. The wig cap will be attached with velcros that I glued onto the head and onto the inside of the wig cap that magically appeared out of nowhere. Alright, slapping that on and start gluing the wig. Since the doll will have a ponytail later, I'm gluing the wefts in direction of the ponytail. It was a tedious and very boring process, so let's just show the finished hair. Looks really nice and I can easily make a ponytail later on. But now it's time for her face up. I wrapped her hair in a piece of cloth and sprayed her with Mr. Super Clear so I can start giving her some initial blushing. Since Sunny's skin has this beautiful darker tone, I will need more pigments and layers of blushing in order to make it pop in the end. I also tried using some white pencil on her lips to use blushing on top, but that didn't really work out that well, so I used some acrylic paint later on it instead. I then take a black watercolor pencil and sketch out her eyeliner. It's not so easy to make that little swoosh, but patience is key here, especially when you go in with acrylic paint and try to draw these lines perfectly sharp with a brush. It's a pain every time, but the result is worth it. On 
On top of the eyeliner I draw an eyeshadow line with a beautiful purple. I thought that would match her outfit well and I love how it looks. Okay, let's sketch out her eyebrows. I wanted to go for some pink eyebrows that match her hair, so I dust on a thick layer of pink pastel chalk dust and then go in with a pink pencil to draw some details. For a more complete look I decided to draw a second eyebrow as well. As you can see I also went in with some pink acrylic paint to really make the color of the brows pop. I used that same acrylic pink on the lips too and now I can blush them much easier than before. Alright, lower lashes. Absolute patience game, like always. I actually needed quite a while to figure out a good lash shape that would look good on the doll's face and in the end I went for a triangle shape. Once they were perfect, I just need to add a bit of shading to blend them into the waterline. I also paint the waterline lighter with a white pencil. And blend those lashes even more. Looks great! Time to add some little stars to her cheeks because I loved the idea of it. I'm using acrylic paint for that. I'm also adding some pearly shimmer to the waterline because it makes the face up glow even more. And of course, those highlighters shall never be missing. For some more details, I'm also adding some single light pink hairs to the eyebrows with acrylic paint. Okay, let's glitter. Yep, glitter on the stars can't be missing. Oh, so pretty. Finally, I can glue her lashes. I spread a good amount of glue on her lid and carefully put the lash and praying to the fake eyelashes god that they will stick. Luckily, it worked this time. And now I can gloss the waterline and lips to make them super shiny. Her eyes I did the same way as the eyes of the bunny, which is a technique I learned from Delightful. It's super easy and so satisfying. If you want to see the full process, just check out my bunny video. And here's the finished face, face <laughs> with inset eyes. They turned out so pretty. I also added some baby hairs to her forehead for a more finished look and I'm living for it. So, time for the outfit. I actually asked Blue Pixie if she could make the armor in Blender so that I can print it on my 3D printer. Elegu was actually so nice and sent me their Mars 2 Pro printer to try it out and to show you some perks of it. As you can see, on first glance it looks exactly the same, but it does have the USB port in the front and not on the back, which is so much nicer because you don't always have to turn your printer around whenever you want to print something new. Also listen, it's much more silent than the regular Elegu Mars. The Mars 2 Pro uses a monochromatic screen, which means, other than my regular Mars that has a LCD screen, the intensity of the UV light is a lot higher, which means shorter exposure times and faster printing. Also the screen of the Mars 2 Pro is 6 inches big, enhancing the printing width about 180 pixels compared to the Mars. I've printed some test armor pieces on both printers first and as you can see they both printed fantastic. However, the Mars 2 Pro was way faster because I only need about 3 seconds of exposure time per layer, while the old Mars needs about 8 seconds per layer. Also, the print came off way easier on the Mars 2 Pro printing plate. It was easy. <laughs> the printing quality of both printers is amazing though, but the few extra dollars on the Mars 2 Pro are definitely worth it. If you consider buying one for yourself, you can now get percentages off by using the link in the description box below. 
Thank you so much again Elegoo for giving me the opportunity to test out the Mars 2 Pro. It's a great addition to my 3D printer army. <laughs> Here you can see me printing the actual armor piece. Ready for some support cracking ASMR? So here's the actual armor piece. I printed it in flexible resin, so I can hopefully slip it onto the doll once it's decorated. Let's paint it right away! I will paint the upper body part in one of my favorite colors, pastel teal. I'm going in carefully and even though I used miniature paint, I ended up needing a lot of layers. I could have probably used an airbrush too, but I kind of was too lazy for the cleaning process afterwards. Oops. One million layers later, it looked like this. Time to make the rest purple! That was way easier, because the purple citadel paint was really nice to work with and very opaque. Wow, it looks so good! I love the colors! I then spread some rubber glue on the edges of the armor and add some Scooby Doo strings to them, because I somehow really liked how that looked! And boom! That's how it looked once it was done. I really, really like it. Time to make her knee pads. I also printed them and paint them purple first. Like this. Then I use my Posca pen and paint the hearts pink. Why the Posca? Because it actually had the perfect pink shade no other paint I had at hand did. When the hearts were painted, I can use some latex strips and glue them onto the sides of the knee pads. They're elastic enough so that I can put them onto the doll later. Looks good! Once the heart was finished, I just glue it to the bodysuit with my trusty Uhu Alleskleber. While that was drying, I already started with her little magic backpack, in which she captures evil video game characters. I used this bead tube I had left over for that and first glue two magnets onto the back of it. Fuck you! Of course the magnets had to stick together when I'm trying to glue them. I let them dry and then take this little clear hard vinyl that I already cut into shape and just roll it and put it into the tube. Perfect! Here you can see that I already installed magnets on the armor too, and it works! Let's give her bodysuit some ruffles now. I cut these stripes from latex and marked the ruffles with tiny scissor snaps. I then just fold the ruffles and secure them with rubber glue. It looks so pretty! I then take the bodysuit and as you can see already attached a stripe of fabric on the inside. Since the rubber glue doesn't stick to the resin that well, I decided to add a fabric stripe and cover it with liquid latex to create a latex texture that the glue can attach to better than the resin. After that was dry, I can attach half of the ruffle with the rubber glue. This is how it looked after gluing both sides. Let's attach the panty piece now. For that I need to put the armor on the doll and then glue everything in place. And boom! Looks good! The doll won't be able to get out of the armor anymore, but since I usually never change the outfits of my themed dolls, it's okay for me. Now I just need to glue the crotch and side seams. I also wanted to make her hands wear gloves, so I decided to paint them white with a zillion thin layers of white paint. Turned out good in the end. Time to style her hair! I first take two strands of her hair towards the front and then just put her hair up in a ponytail. After that I straighten and style the hair nicely. This part is always fun. To give her a little hairband, I wrap around a purple Scooby-Doo band on the base of her ponytail and just knot it in place. Looks good! Hair done! 
Meanwhile, I had trouble with the armor. It cracked. Mm, I think it was because of the the resin. Shouldn't have done that. It warped because of the heat. It cracked because I wanted to gloss it with UV resin, but it warped the armor and broke it in the front. Okay, emergency plan B. Glitter! I basically just spread glue on all purple pieces of her outfit and glitterify them. And it actually looks even better than before. Damn, it looks so pretty. Sometimes I feel these small accidents can even make your project better. I'm glad. Let's give her some roller skates. Blue Pixie sculpted these for me and I printed the different parts on my 3D printer. This is the boot part, which I'm first painting in the colors of the doll's outfit. I again used purple, teal, some yellow and some pink. My logo I made golden. This is how the shoe looked all painted. I want these shoes for myself now, please. To make her skates, I painted the base for the wheels to be attached yellow and then just add the wheels that I painted pink with small metal bars that I made from old pinning needles. With super glue, they held in place nicely and the wheels actually work. That's so cool. With wood glue, I first glue the shoes onto the skate base and let it dry overnight. I then use UV resin to fill up the gaps. After curing and glitterifying the skates, they look like this. And I definitely need some of these for myself. Oh my god. Too bad I can't roller skate rip. Oh yeah, and I won't get rid of purple glitter now for the next two years approximately. The headphones Blue Pixie made, I just printed on my printer and painted them like this. They look so cute! Ah! Time to paint her transformation item, the Game Boy. I printed it in yellow resin, so I don't need to paint it yellow and just painted the buttons and screen in different colors now. After it was painted, I just used a latex strap for the thigh-high belt and glued it together and attached the Game Boy with a latex fabric glue method to it. Time to finish the backpack. I printed the USB hub plate and will now just paint it purple. I spread some super glue on top of the backpack and slap it on. We still don't have enough glitter, so let's glitterify it too. For her stockings, I just cleaned up a piece of elastic fabric on top and bottom seam and sewed it together in the back finished sides in. Turned around, they looked like this. Okay, but no magical girl is complete with her magic item, right? Let's make her a gigantic hammer. I printed these three handle pieces on my 3D printer and now just have to sand them and glue them together with some super glue. I fill in the gaps with a little bit of resin and cure it. Let's decorate it. I made a small ribbon from latex and glued it to the handle like this. And then, while on stream, we decided the handle needs some rhinestones too, so I add a big pink rhinestone in the middle here and a bunch of smaller ones all the way around the big one. Also a small pink underneath, because <laughs> why not? So cute. Can't wait to put on the hammer. Because it's like a huge hammer, but it has like the ribbon and it's just like, hey! Bonk! <laughs> Time to make the hammer head. I will steal the pink parts from this hammer I bought on eBay first. Luckily, I can easily remove them. I then take the hammer head piece I printed in yellow and add the pink hammer pieces to mine. They fit perfectly, but to be sure, I glued them in with some Uhu glue. Time to attach the handle to the head of the wand and boom! It looks so freaking good. I would have never thought it would turn out this nice. Now it's bong time, bitch. And yeah, I think with the hammer done, we are actually done with the doll.
Suki is an ordinary girl who loves to play video games. But all changes when one day an evil force suddenly makes video game characters come to life and forces them to destroy the earth. This is when through a shortcut on her console, Suki transforms into the magical arcade skater. It's her task to capture the evil characters with her magic hammer, cleanse their mind in her magical backpack and transfer them back into the video games with the USB hub on it. With her cleverness and power, she will hopefully find out where this evil forest comes from. And here's my very own magical girl. How do you like her? I lowkey wish she had her own anime now that I could binge watch. Also, thank you to all my patrons and Twitch subscribers. <laughs> You're distracting me. Uh, uh. Also, thank you to all my patrons and Twitch subscribers. Also, thank you to all my Twitch... Twitch, Twitch, Twitch. <laughs> okay. Also, thank you to all my patrons and Twitch subscribers. You guys are such a huge support and make all of this possible. Thank you a million times. And if you like my video, please leave a comment down below, hit the like button, and subscribe to my channel to never miss out on future videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video and have a beautiful, creative day. Bye. <laughs> Bonk. Ha <laughs> <laughs>